Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know what it is? Your boy DJ Damage, man. Back at the Damage Control Podcast, man. Episode 27. You know what I'm saying? We got up and coming pop star right here, man. Jewel Contre. What's going on, brother? How you doing? Nothing much. I'm great. How are you? Good to hear. Good to hear, man. Doing good, man. 26. Let's go back. Let's go back. Yeah, we on 26 right here, man. You know what I'm saying? Episode 26. You know, we we've been shooting so we've been shooting so many episodes, man. We're losing track, man. <laughs> That's good. It's good to see Vinci. Think about my partner right here, man. Making sure everything is on is on, you know what I mean? Making sure it's on point. What's up, man? Um what's up though, man? How you doing? I'm good. Yeah, I uh I'm in the middle of school right now. Are We're you supposed to be watching a movie, but you know. I, I have to take care of business when you got to yeah, take care yeah, of business. Yeah, yeah. Prioritizing, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, the, yeah. the school you're watching this, he, he's being extracurricular right now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> That's what's happening. Though. Tell me a little about the Trojans, you. USC. Yes. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what's up. That's what's up, man. Tell me a little bit about you, man. Well, uh, I mean, I've had, I'm not going to say like a hard life or nothing. I've had it pretty easy. I've had a good life. Yeah. Uh, supportive household everyone's cool uh my whole family's here watching this they're all excited so uh, i have that as a blessing and I, I understand that's a privilege a lot of people don't even have that going so i just thank god for that uh i love these sort of opportunities i love to talk uh i i'm i'm in law school so uh, you know i love to speak so uh that that's why i love these podcasts i love these sort of interviews and i'm happy it's on zoom too because it makes sure it's nice and clear oh yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. A lot of people, don't, and I'm glad you know how to use it. There's a lot of people that are still learning how to use it. Like, you'd be surprised at interviews I haven't had yet because of the simple fact that they don't know how to use Zoom yet. So it's like, I, I believe teach it. it's hard. My I teacher, teach, I got to teach you to get your own, man. But <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. It, it, you know, it, and I, I see that a lot of schools, most of all the schools are using it. So. Exactly. Yeah. Especially in California, we're really locked down still. Corona's yeah. got us good. Yeah. Yeah, I'm in Florida, so, so everything's a little little more, you know, you're able to move around a little more out here now. Yeah, you guys never really cared that much, huh? <laughs> Just kind of, yeah. Listen, the mayor of the city that I'm at said, open everything. I don't care. Wow, yeah. I'm supposed to show you. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, we're super locked down here. Like, half our restaurants are still closed. Like, really? Um, yeah, it, it's insane. It's like a ghost town. That's crazy, man. So how did you, I mean, how did you adapt to it? Like, you know, like, I know California, like, everybody's usually on the go. Small city, big city, everybody's usually on the go. But to shut down like that out of nowhere, how'd you adapt? Oh, man, to be honest, I kind of liked it. Like, uh, I like being at home. I don't like doing anything. Like I said, no haircuts, nothing. I'm not even yeah, wearing pants. Like, off. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's a luxury. I like it. Oh, and man. especially for school, because I was commuting, and it would take, like, an hour to get to USC. And then, like, obviously, traffic on the way home, it would take, like, three, four hours. So, mm -hmm. now it's just online through Zoom. It's cool. I like it a lot. Right, 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 right. Yeah, man, that's what's up, man. And one thing about it, um, it really brought out the creativity out of people. You know what oh, I'm yeah. saying? It definitely brought out the creativity out of people. Like, like, for example, this podcast, this was created during the quarantine. This is something me and my partner been wanting to do for years, but we never had the time to sit down and literally put it together. Yeah, yeah, great. And that's what it takes. You just got to stay busy, push through it. Yeah, man. Shout out to Big Hef. Big Hef definitely put me on to you and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Told me yeah, about Big Hef. He's great, man. He's always, always has an ear out to the streets, you know, yeah. <laughs> always yeah. trying to find new people and it helps. Like, Absolutely. I mean, you see like the people he's worked on recently and it's crazy. Like all double XL freshmen, Ty Breeze coming up right now. It's crazy. Yep, she's on really next. We got her on here next week. You know what I mean? She's doing, definitely doing her thing. Yeah, she's just with Cardi B. Can you believe that? Yeah, got a record with Mulatto going crazy. You know, yeah. Cardi's birthday, you know what I'm saying? It doesn't get bigger than that, man. Half you doing your thing with her, man. <laughs> yeah, I would have I liked to invite to Cardi's party, but you know. Right, 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 right. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I think all of us would have. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> but Hef was there, so we was there in spirit, man. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> what made you get into the music, though, man? Oh, man. You know, I've always loved, like, entertainment. Uh, I always wanted to do something when I was little. My parents would always have me in auditions and stuff for commercials and all that good really? stuff. Yeah, so I always, uh, I grew up in that sort of thing. My parents wanted to push that. So um, I uh, went to school, and I was lucky. My parents sacrificed a lot, and I was able to go to a private school in uh, Westlake, which is, like, the rich area where I'm from, right? Okay. And uh so there was kids there, like Will Smith's kids went there, like Wayne Gretzky's kids went there. It was crazy. Yeah. Uh, 
I'm sorry, what'd you say? How was that? Were you like able to like, did you like- No, no it was like play? cool. Like I was able to like adjust. I, I played football and all that good stuff. So you kind of like, you make friends through that and all that good yeah. stuff, you know? And everyone was nice. Everyone was humble. You wouldn't know they're famous because they assumed everyone had money there. So <laughs> they needed to be careful who they were talking like the, to. And see, it's like a peace of mind for them to just try to be normal because you oh, got definitely. some of the stars, kids that just live under that light. Like, damn, you know, like I can't go anywhere with everybody trying to treat me either better or worse because of who my parents are. So that's exactly. good. That's good. That's definitely good. Wayne Gretzky, huh? You ever seen him? Like, yeah, I saw kid. Wayne Gretzky. I played baseball with his son. So, uh, we, he used to come to the games and stuff. Of course, I had to take some pictures with him and stuff. So it was cool. Really cool guy. But um, as far as that goes, like, I knew I had all these people around me, all these contacts, but I was always afraid to pull the trigger. Like, I never, like, pursued to ask for anything. I didn't want to, like, be that guy, you know? So uh, I always kind of regretted that a little bit. So, you always kind of do because they always say you, you miss every shot you don't take. Exactly. Yeah, and that's with everything, let yeah. alone this. So uh, I, I lived with that mindset for about a year after I had graduated. Yeah. And I happened to be, uh, I came back from school, from college, and I went to one of my sister's like dance recitals or something. Mm -hmm. And we're just hanging out at the hotel that's across the street from my school before it uh, like started. And I just see this huge commotion. And uh, I later find out that it's Ray J's um, baby shower. So oh, I see like 40 dudes running in and out. I'm like, huh, I wonder what that is. And I just had that in the back of my mind. I'm like, I can't waste another shot. I have to go up and ask. So I walked up to him. I said, hey, I got some songs for you. Uh, I'd love if you can listen, all that good stuff. And of course, you just get the usual like treatment. Like, yeah, all right, I'll contact you on Monday. I'm like, all right, yeah, sure, whatever. Luckily, there was one guy in the group, Ron, the American Dream. He's from Cleveland. He's a boxer. He okay. was part of, he's part of Ray J's like, inner circle. And he, he just like took a liking to me and he always like pursued. And on Monday morning, I actually got a call and he said, I, we really like your songs. And uh, about another couple of weeks went by and Ron said, Hey, we're in LA. Uh, we're in the studio. Come by if you can. And sure enough, I wake everyone up at 2 AM, my mom, my sister, everyone, <laughs> we drive to LA hour and a half drive at 2 AM. And it all started from there. And from there, the relationships grew, meet people like big half. And all these opportunities come from it. That's very dope. Very dope. So, do you remember any of the any of the songs that you actually let, like let them hear? Like, was it something like? Yeah, uh, I started as like a producer. So, to be honest, completely honest, when I had met him, I didn't really know how to make music all that much. Like, I just said, like, I'm gonna shoot my shot, and I figured, like, they're probably not gonna listen anyways. So, I learned how to make beats, do all that stuff on YouTube that weekend, and. Uh, I had sent him just like some stuff I threw together, R&B type stuff. I played a little piano, so I knew like a general idea what I was doing. So I buy that FL studio, all those good things, go to Guitar Center, pick up what I can. Yes, and I put it together and uh, they liked it. Uh, and that was really lucky. But I sent him like some really cool like melodic beats. That's when I thought I was going to be a rapper. I wanted to be like J. Cole, give like nice <laughs> storytelling beats, you know. <laughs> and like cool melodic stuff. So I was sending him all those like cool, like old school beats, you know? And uh, I think we recorded one song called Lamborghini Music. It, it was pretty good, uh, but we never released it. No one ever put it out. Maybe in the future we'll collab again, but yeah. right now I'm kind of doing my own thing. Um, it happened though, it happened though. That's something you could like, like you're doing right now, telling me about it, you know? That's something exactly, you exactly. About, you know? Not a lot of people get that lucky, man, and guess what? You you were probably one in a million to get that phone call, and the reason why I say that is because, like you said, someone took a liking to you. If that would have never happened, oh yeah, no, you you know what I mean? It's just you know, if it was left up to Ray J and no one, I would, get it, it, yeah, never... I get it. And it's nothing personal. I get it, you know, like you got a thousand people a day in your face trying to, you know what I mean? So, yeah, exactly. So what I see, I heard your single, uh, Paradise. Oh, cool. So there, I got a to hear. I got a chance to hear it a couple of days ago. Uh, very. Um, Smooth vibe, you know what I'm saying? Feel good music. I like that. You gave cool. me like that was the goal. You gave me like an Ed Sheeran. You gave me like an Ed Sheeran today's pop type of vibe. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Mm -hmm. I guess that's what you was going for, right? Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. You're in Orlando, right? I'm. Yeah. Yeah. I'm about an oh. uh, hour. I'm about an hour north from Orlando. I'm close to you. I'm close to UF. Okay. Close my num my number one state besides like here is uh, Boca Raton. Like that's the city where people. Out of South Florida. Yes, sir. I yeah. live Thirty minutes from there. Okay. 
Yeah, so th that's why I, I – that was the vibe. And I well, like – Money in Boca, like, boy. You get into yeah, the I, market, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. The rich moms love me. What can I say? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> the rich soccer moms love you. Yeah. Starbucks moms love you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's yeah. Cool, man, that's what's up. So what you got coming up, man? Well, uh, I have a lot of songs just, like, ready to go. I got some, like – some really cool like Latin songs where I finally get to like embrace a little rap. It's cool. Uh, nice uh, melodies. Uh, and I think they'll, they'll pop off in Florida. I really like those songs. I think they have a good chance over there. Uh, okay. I have a video coming out for paradise very soon. It's just being edited and it's ready within the next couple weeks. And then uh, I'm this Friday, I have a big studio session. So I'm excited to put some more songs together. That's what's up, man. That's yep. what's up. So how long you been doing this? Man, well, I originally met, well, see, that's the thing. It's been so inconsistent because I've been going to school this whole time. So, like, I basically, my first introduction to, like, putting songs together was two and a half years ago. Okay. And uh, I did those ones for Ray J, and I uh, get in the studio with him, and then there was kind of, like, a little break, and then I finally, I, I've been through, like, four or five different camps now as far as, like, the team around me. It's crazy. Okay. So, uh, uh, we finally settled on one that's cool, and I love the team right now. Um, and anyways, it's been off and on in, like, spurts of, like, three or four months. Total time in reality as far as, like, time spent in the studio, like, doing well, maybe two months. But well, see, you and that, that little bit of – that little time frame have accomplished more than I've known people – personally that's been doing this for years I haven't even got one break yet you know it's just a matter of and see the thing about it too to be real it's location in a sense because you're in cali no matter where in cali you're gonna have that chance sooner or later quicker than anybody else is not yeah exactly I mean? yeah and uh just again it's a blessing i understand the luck involved with it i mean i'm sure there's millions of people out there that have songs but talent that speaks overall man talent and grind and persistence speaks overall man you know what I mean? Who are some Thank of your influences? Man, I grew – well, see, uh, I have older parents. They were late bloomers when they had us. They were, like, 40. So <laughs> uh, we listened to really, really, uh, like, old music growing up. In the cars, it was always, like, 60s, 70s, a little bit of 80s. And uh, wrong with that, man? It's good music, man. Oh, man, I loved it. Yeah, I still listen. That's, like, my primary, like, Sample song. music like, nowadays, too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. Well, like, I don't know. Did you hear that new Machine Gun Kelly album where it's, like, all, like, rock? Yes, I heard some, I heard, I heard some of it. I didn't hear the whole thing, yeah. But he, he I, praises from everybody from that. Yeah, I loved it. I thought it was great. I think that's a new direction of music coming soon. This session is going to be focused on a lot of that type of, like, instrumentation and stuff. It'll be front. versatile, man, because people want to hear different stuff, man. Definitely. Like the sound right now is so oversaturated that they jump on the next best, the next thing that sounds different. Period. Big time. And like two or three artists control the sound right now. And I think that sound's getting played out like very soon. Absolutely so. played out. Absolutely mm -hmm. played out, you know? And it's like you said, though, going back to, you know, the time frame. There's a, there's a couple of artists who've been doing it just about as long. And look at them now. Like Lil Baby's only been rapping for, what, uh, two years? Exactly. Had yeah. money, you know, taking it to Latin music, didn't even know how to make music two years ago. Now look at him, the number one artist yeah, in the world is Latin music. Oh, yeah. Everything going number one, you know? Oh, yeah. it's, it's, what's meant for you is meant for you. Yeah. You know? I've been talking about that a lot lately, how, like, the whole Latin scene. The people don't understand, like, just the population difference. Latin artists are tripling what, like, the top American artists are doing. Like, middle-tier Latin artists are still, like, could be top of U.S. billboards if they were here. You know why, right? Because of all the other countries as well. They, yep. love, they, they love it here. Imagine over there where they don't get it like that. Exactly. Like, like I tell hip-hop, I look at Florida, look at Pitbull, look at Akon, all artists. I said, man, fuck the states. <sighs> Going overseas with it and getting bags and bags and bags. You know what? I mean? When's the last time you've seen any of them do a, a United States show before COVID? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know no, what I mean? It's it, just... It's true. You gotta, they, you gotta know the game, man, and that's one big South America and all them other countries. They love it. Mm -hmm. they love it. Well, and you also see like traditionally like American rappers really branching out. Like Little Pump did a song like in all Spanish, and it's like wow. What? Yeah, yeah. It, so, it, look, it, Nicki Minaj got two, got two. She got two Latin records, and she's nominated for a Latin Grammy. Wow, there you go. Yeah, I mean, it's just you know it's just the crossover, bro. It's just 
is with the times. That's what people want to hear. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? McDonald's giving oh. Calvin a freaking meal. <laughs> giving Travis Scott one. You know what I'm saying? It's just, hey, it's just, you know, the, and I like that the culture is spreading out, man. And it's Definitely. just everybody is, is, I guess COVID in a sense brought people together as well. Because you never, you didn't, you didn't see stuff like this before. No so. way. Yeah, I don't know if it's forced or some sort of like industry ploy or what's you gotta happening. Do this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> everyone's trying to seem good nowadays. Right. So, right. Yeah. Right, man. So, um, before we get up out of here, man, who are some of your dream collabs? Man. That's hard. I, I, if Machine Gun Kelly stays on the route he's at, I'd love to do some songs with him. Uh, Doja Cat, I think, would be a great like fit for like if she was like a feature on Paradise, that'd be crazy. Like that would be hard. Yeah, she would fit actually, right in. The re- actually, me hearing the record telling you that, I would the female would bring a whole different vibe to it. Yeah, I think that'd be really cool. Um, well, as far as that goes, or, or Dua Lipa, she's good too. Have you heard Dua Lipa yes, records? Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah, she she's doing collabs with everyone now. She did a song with the baby. So uh she's that's obviously her. Yeah, that's a yeah. song of her, yeah. Yeah, she's willing to like move around from like the pop scene. And of course, you gotta go like the pinnacle pop, like the Biebers, the Ed Sheerans, the, the Money Shawn Makers. Biebers. Number one, yeah. man, do you know that? The number ones, you know? I, I, I forgot the most important, my favorite, Post Malone. Really? Yeah, Post Malone's great. I really like his music. I think uh he's branching out into more pop now. He, you could tell that his music. See, when you're original and you, when you're or when your music comes organically and you're original, and you just be you, people mm-hmm. love you more. People yep. love you more, man. You know what I'm saying? When you try to put on a persona that that you always got to like hide, you I got to be this type of person. So I got to, you know, people love you more when you're you, man. You know that's why it's called personality. Yep, facts. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> but uh, let them let the people know where they can find you at, man, and what you know, so where they can stream your music, everything like all that good stuff, man. Plug in real quick. Okay, great. You can listen on Spotify, Apple Music, SoundCloud, all that good stuff. Just type in my name, Joel J U U L C O N T R A E, and that's my Instagram, exactly like my name, J U U L C O N T R A E, and from there I can link you everywhere. And uh, I'll check you guys out too for sure. Just yeah, definitely, in, I can look at you too. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, this episode will be out on on YouTube. Great, great. TV.com. You know what I'm saying? Uh, any shout outs you want to give out? Uh, shout out Ron, the American Dream. Shout out uh, Big Half, uh, and everyone else that's like been involved with it. Shout out Milton. Uh, now that you mentioned YouTube, uh, Jewel and Car Vlogs on YouTube. That's a <laughs> vlog channel me and my family do. Uh, we have a lot of fun on that. Uh, we just put out a video today, actually. So, uh, yeah, everybody go check that out. And thank you very much for the opportunity. And I had a great time. Thank you. Appreciate you coming on here, man. Again, awesome. the Damage Control Podcast. And let me make the correction. This is episode 27. Oh, okay. okay. I do. It, it is what it is. <laughs> we here, though. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, man, we've been shooting so many episodes, man. We lose track, bro. But we here, man. That's a good problem to have. Always stay busy. Absolutely. But, Jewel, brother, I appreciate you coming on here, man. And like I said, man, it's Damage Control Podcast. Shout out to you. Shout out to Big Half, man. We gone, man. Shout out to Adu Clothing. And shout out to Hip Hop Everything, man. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Coming out here, brother, for sure. All right. Bye-bye. My brother.